My name is Miro and I live on a tiny planet. Today we'll be vlogging on the Insta360 X3 and this is the me mode. I've never used it before. Like honestly, the biggest question for me is how far should I keep my camera? So like this far? Is this weird? Or no, can I put it closer like this? Now since this is a 360 degree camera, I think the 360 mode actually makes the most sense. And one thing that this camera has different to all the other action cameras which are not 360, well, apart from not being 360 is that, well, I'm in focus. With this, everything's always in focus because it's a 180 degree lens. Now I've already made a bunch of videos about this camera and how bad the video quality is compared to other action cameras and well in this video now I'm actually going to go through all of the cycles, all of the settings, well more or less all of the settings. So the single lens mode what you're seeing right now which I think isn't really the best one. The 360 degree mode and the me mode which as I said I've never used so today is going to be the first time that I'm actively going to go with me mode. Now when it comes to camera settings I'll always be using the same camera settings so auto shutter speed auto ISO max 400 auto white balance and a lock picture profile which I have to work with quite heavy to make it work now the me mode exports in 1080p video which suggests that this camera is a 1080p camera and I've already talked about this on my other videos you cannot get more than 1080p like useful resolution out of this even though the 360 degree is 5.7k but that's for the whole sphere so unless you want to go with this well then you know you're stuck with that 1080p or if you want to crop in a little more then it's less than 1080p so this is the biggest downside that people get when they buy this camera and i was the one the same as everybody else i mean the poor video resolution and the poor quality is something that just makes this camera kind of non-usable for the most part now i was called a pixel peeper in one of my recent videos by somebody commenting but honestly i mean even the osmo action the first edition looks so much better than, than this but still I mean 360 degrees you cannot do this with the Oslo action that's just not possible tiny planet baby now if you guys saw yesterday's video where I was talking about the major flood well we spent the whole afternoon actually sweeping up the garage and taking away all the mud and the water and today we still have to do this and well, I mean, it's, it's going to be a long time since we get everything clean, but it's nothing to do with the camera, it's just that it's a big thing happening currently. I mean, can you see the seam of the Mi mode? I think, I think it's visible because it's, you know, the, the main character is right where the stitching plane is. This is why I, I honestly don't understand why you would want to use the Mi mode for vlog. There's still so much water and you can see where the edge is, seriously. But this is cool, you know, having a selfie stick, you can put your camera far away and then you can control how close you are with the zoom. Of course, the more you zoom in, the more you lose the resolution, which is the bad thing about this. No, but it does offer the flexibility to do this. I think this is way too long for vlogging. And you look like an idiot holding a stick. Like I'm fishing. There's no fish down there, I think everything's just gone. No, but there is still this one thing that you have to consider if you want to use Insta360 for vlogging and that is that there's a lot of post-production work. I mean, as cool as it is to be able to reframe the shot, it also requires quite a lot of post-production effort. Now, it's easy to do and you can get really creative, but just remember, if you want to do like daily vlogs and you're very limited with time, then this is probably not the best choice. This is very a traditional action camera actually makes it a lot easier because you get video clips that are already framed you know unless you screw up the framing like I typically do but you don't have to really do anything in post-production except just cut the clips in the front and in the back and somewhere in between and stitch everything together here you have to first reframe everything then export everything and then you can start the normal editing process you know but when it comes to the whole microphone and sound quality I think the Insta360 X3 is 
is probably the best sounding camera on the market currently. Let me jump in here real quickly to say that the audio on the Insta360 X3 is pretty much not usable except if you're using the single lens mode or the 360 mode and the camera is relatively close to you. Well that could work but everything on a selfie stick is just no, no, no. Okay, let's get back. I haven't tried the GoPro Hero 11 nor the DJI Osmo Action 4 but from what I've seen in the reviews you really don't need to buy a separate microphone for this and you have a 360 degree sound kind of experience so if you reframe your shot you can you know the microphones can follow where you're framing because it has like four of them or something like this so you have a 360 degree sound capture not now because this is like single lens mode but it's really I mean I don't really consider using a microphone phone with this camera. So this is how you can spice up your action camera footage. So depth of field on, voice isolation on. So the voice that you're hearing now is just my voice and no ambient sound. And you can add, well, a little bit of motion blur to make things look more natural. Now don't worry, don't try to find this in any sort of post-production app of the Insta360. That's all done in DaVinci Resolve and for that you need the DaVinci Resolve Studio version. And it's just a matter of applying a depth map to get the background blurry and voice isolation and post-production. So anyway, that's not the topic of this video, but you can see how spicier things can look. So to wrap this video up, I think that action cameras are amazing for action shots and the Insta360 definitely beats every other camera in this category. But when it comes to vlogging, I think vlogging has come so much further ahead in terms of video quality that this just doesn't cut it anymore. Honestly, I mean, if I would have this 10 years ago, my god, that would be probably the most interesting video you could possibly see on YouTube. But now it's just not comparing to all the full cameras that we have. Anyway, let me know what you think down below, write a comment, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already, and well, I'll see you in the next video on my tiny planet. <laughs>